Hello and welcome back to the Stained Glass Tutorials. This is part 3, and I'll be picking up where part 2 left off. Remember, timestamps are in the description so you can jump to where you need. Step 14. Soldering. Safety glasses are mandatory. A long sleeve shirt, pants, and closed toe shoes are recommended because there is a possibility of getting burned. Once everything is pinned, the fun part begins. I plug in my soldering iron and wait for it to heat up. This is just a basic soldering iron. I don't have a temperature controlled one, but I've heard they're really nice. The kit I bought came with a soldering iron stand to hold the soldering iron. I use a piece of wet sponge to clean and control the temperature. While it heats up, I set up the fan. The fan blows away the solder smoke since I can't open the windows I have. In order for the solder to stick to the foil, flux must be added. Without flux, the solder won't stick. As far as I know, there are two types of flux, paste and liquid. I've used the liquid type in class, but I prefer the paste type. I use a small brush to apply the flux, then begin soldering. I first tack the pieces together. This will allow me to remove the pins so I can solder the rest of the pieces. I use a 60% tin, 40% lead mixture, also known as 60-40. There are also other mixtures, and even lead-free solder. Lead-free solder should be used if you are making jewelry, such as earrings or necklaces. Lead-free solder is more expensive though. I tack the front, and then the back. Before I tack the back, I remove the paper, then I can solder the rest of the pieces. The soldering iron must always be moving and never stay in one place for too long. Another thing to remember is to not overheat the glass. If the glass gets too hot, it will crack. Smaller projects heat up faster than larger ones. If you aren't sure if the glass is too hot, then either wait or work on a different area. You can also put your finger on the glass, but be careful not to burn yourself. Better to be safe than sorry. I've never broken a piece of glass due to overheating, but I know it will happen at some point. The fan helps to keep the glass cool, but it can still overheat. I have heard of using ice to cool the glass, but I don't recommend it. The ice can cause thermal shock to the glass and crack it. Every once in a while, I rub the iron across the wet sponge. This cleans off the carbon buildup that accumulates on the iron. Don't put the iron back onto the stand right after you clean it. Apply a small amount of solder to tin the tip. Tinning stops the tip from oxidizing by creating a protective layer between the air and the iron. The solder lines must be thick to improve the stability. Melt a little solder onto the iron and touch the iron to the foil. The solder will flow onto the foil. It takes practice to get a nice even bead of solder. If the foil gets overheated, the adhesive will melt and the foil won't stick to the glass. I've had problems with this, especially on the outer edges. Take your time. There is no need to rush. Practice makes perfect. Recently, I've learned about doing a beaded edge around the outside of the project. I never learned to do this when I first learned how to do stained glass, so I didn't know this was a thing. Doing a beaded edge instead of a flat edge provides strength to the overall project. Another thing it does is make the project look nicer. I looked up how to solder a beaded edge and found some tutorials. Initially, I tried to do it like they did, holding the iron flat over the glass and applying a small amount of solder to the edge. This had mixed results. More often than not, the solder just flowed over the edge rather than sticking on the edge. I did this all around the edge on the front and back. Since I had a lot of excess solder, I used that to bead the wider edges. I could either hold the glass as I moved the iron, or set up a clamp. There are wedges you can buy that are specifically for this purpose, but I didn't have any, so I put the glass between two pieces of wood and used a clamp to hold it. I don't tighten the clamp very hard, just enough to hold the glass vertically while I try to figure out what I'm doing. I need to make sure I don't overheat the edges, otherwise the adhesive on the foil won't stick to the glass. Some of the solder drips off the edge onto the already soldered bits. This is normal. The soldered drips won't stick to the already soldered parts because the already soldered parts are cool. I put the excess solder into a container because I can still use it. Step 15. Making and attaching hooks. To make hooks, I use copper wire. Depending on the size and weight of the project, you will want to use the appropriate gauge wire. If hanging a large and heavy project, use thicker wire. If hanging a small and lightweight project, use thinner wire. Using thin wire on a heavy project will cause the hooks to change shape and fail. If you don't have thicker wire, you can braid thinner wire together to make thicker wire. At some point, you will need to use actual thicker wire instead of braided thin wire for larger projects. I use 20 gauge wire. These are called jump rings. Jump rings are just wire that is bent into a circle. They still have to be tinned and they are still soldered into a seam and not on the edge of the glass. I learned to make hooks with the tail, and if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that is how I make hooks prior to learning about making jump rings. I thought I'd show both ways, and you can choose whatever you prefer. For the other option to hang the piece, I call them hooks. 
Technically, a hook is the general term for hanging things, and a jump ring is a type of hook. They essentially do the same thing. But to avoid confusion, I classify a jump ring and hook as two different things, even though they are the same thing. I use a wire tool to make the loops. You could use a pencil, pen, pliers, or anything else that gives the desired size. Wrap the wire around your cylindrical object of choice, either overlapping the end or butting the end to the rest of the wire. The hook will need to be tinned and soldered to the glass. Apply flux and use pliers to hold the wire. If you hold the wire with your fingers, you will burn them. Heat transfers very quickly through metal. Hold the hook as you apply solder with pliers. Once the hook is tinned, arrange it the way you want to the glass. The hook must be soldered in a seam. This provides a stable fit. Once you have the hook in position, use the soldering iron to melt the solder. Make sure no part of the hook sticks out from the solder, otherwise it'll scratch you if you run your hand along it. Once you are finished soldering, let the glass cool. Step 16. Cleaning the finished project. Now it's time to clean the residual flux, solder, and whatever else accumulated. Remember to let the glass cool down. If you put the glass under water and it is still hot, it can crack the glass. There are chemicals to clean off the flux and patina, but I don't use them. I use Dawn dish soap and a sponge to clean it, and it works just as well. As I mentioned before, if silver sharpie is used, rubbing alcohol or nail polish remover must be used to get the silver off. The black sharpie should come off just fine with dish soap and water. Use either paper towels, paper napkins, or a towel to dry the finished project. Depending on what kind of foil used, you may or may not need to change the color of the solder. Step 17. Changing the color of the solder. Solder is naturally silver. To change it to black or copper, a solution called a patina is used. To apply the patina, find a container and pour a small amount in. Use disposable gloves because the patina will stain skin and clothes. Use an old toothbrush and dip the toothbrush into the patina. The patina will stain the toothbrush, so be sure to keep your toothbrushes for black patina and copper patina separate. Scrub the solder lines. You will notice the solder instantly changes color. Keep scrubbing until all the parts are the desired color. There is no way to make the color darker. Layering the patina doesn't make it darker since the initial chemical reaction has already taken place. I've never tried making different areas different colors. I think it could be done, but you'd have to plan it beforehand. There's also the fact that you'd have to figure out how to keep the patina from mixing. Rinse the excess patina off using water. The patina on the solder won't come off as easily. If you want to get the patina off, you would need steel wool. Again, there are chemicals you can buy that clean off the excess patina, but I just use water, then move on to waxing. I've never used those types of cleaning chemicals when I learned how to do stained glass, but you do you. Step 18. Waxing the glass. The final step is to wax the finished project. You don't necessarily need to do this step if you don't want to. The wax makes the glass and solder shiny and protects the solder from oxidizing. Oxidizing is a natural process. The wax just delays the oxidation. I've used the gel-like wax and the spray wax. I'm a fan of the liquid wax. The gel wax left the residue that I didn't like. Spray on wax and wait for a few seconds, then wipe it off. Now you're all done. Hang it in a window and admire your handiwork. Step 19. Hanging the finished project. There are many ways you can hang the finished project. I use fishing line. From afar, it looks like the glass is floating, and it has enough strength to hold small pieces. I've never done anything larger than 9 inches, but the larger the project, the heavier it will be. I know there are ways to reinforce the glass, but I don't have any experience with it yet. I will be making additional tutorials when I learn something new or have enough experience. I will leave additional information in the description, including the subreddit if you want to know more about stained glass. Let me know if you have questions. I want to give a shout out to Clay Corp over on the stained glass subreddit page for helping me with the information and reviewing my videos to make sure I had the most accurate information. They have so much knowledge and I definitely learned new things along the way. Like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in future tutorials.